Hello and welcome to the session, everybody. Um, today we are going to do some live troubleshooting using App Dynamics platform. This is a dashboard that I created with an e-commerce application. In the morning, I had a session where I started with the app, how do you how do you deploy the App Dynamics agents, and then we went from there to the result which as you can see is a nice dashboard which you can look at 8 in the morning and sort of get an idea of how your application works. In this session, we are going to go the other way around. This is your 8 o'clock in the morning dashboard and you're looking at it and we are trying to troubleshoot the issues that we see here. Before I actually dive in, let's look at a few things that, that is going on wrong. So the application health is big red. One of the databases is red, other is also not very well, it's warning. Um, a lot of our business transactions are showing as error. And when we sh see business transactions as error, in App Dynamics, what happens is we create health rules which are triggered when business transaction violations happen. In this particular dashboard, we are looking at the list of all the health rules for the time range that I set, six hours. We can definitely make it custom in case there has been an outage or somebody is interested in a particular time frame. And of course, we do have the standard time frames for monitoring. And this is the list of all the health rule violations. Now, this is what you are looking at, which is one of the outputs of when you deploy App Dynamics. This is what's the last level. But as an engineer, we are not interested in how it looks and how it feels, but more interested in the quality of data that the platform will provide us. So let's dive a little bit deeper. I mentioned that our database is not very well, both database one and the database two. And we want to monitor what's going on over there. So in App Dynamics, we have the ability to drill down into a particular health rule violation. So I'll just double click open it up. This is talking about the database that I am monitoring. So the agents are deployed on this particular database. And let's click into that database. All right. Because the agent is deployed on the database server, it's going to collect a lot of metrics that is sent to App Dynamics. And once those metrics are collected, you can see over time how the database has performed. Most important uh, information that people look at here can be inside activity. What are the wait states, which are taking a lot of time? What are the top activities? So I'll just let it load. Including the exact query which is happening. So sometimes you can see that some queries will take a lot longer. And that's going to break SLAs. So you might not know, not have complete visibility into the query, but with database visibility enabled, you can double click and actually open the query, find out where that query is being called. For example, if it's a inventory query, so in any e-commerce application, it is expected while placing an order, the inventory query would be called. So that way you will have complete access to the exact query. And if it is not optimized, you can ask the database administrators to go ahead and look at it. So all of the query detail is also available, as you can see here. This is still an OK query, but sometimes we do have a lot of joins. And that definitely does not help in the response time of the database. And that's going to be a very important point during troubleshooting. This is one aspect. And we drilled down into the database to get all of this data. Let's go back to the application dashboard and look at other stuff. We are back again at our application dashboard. We are looking at the whole entire application health, which is showing as critical. Let's drill down into what's going on over here. So if I keep on double clicking on all of the alerts that I'm getting, I will be able to go to the base controller UI that App Dynamics provides when the agents are completely deployed. Now, if we look at all the health rules that have been triggered, on the top right, you can see a list of all the events. 
at a quick glance, you can also see that there what have been the load, the response time, and the errors for the entire application. And this contains all of the transactions that are being monitored. So for example, if we are talking about our e-commerce application, uh, transactions like checkout, uh, payment, inventory, add to cart, login, login is also important. All of that is being monitored. And if there are any errors in those particular transactions, we will see a list of all of those errors. So let's dive in to the health rule violations at the top right. When any health rule violation happens, it triggers an event. And this is the complete event list which, which you can see on the application dashboard. What you see here, along with the timestamp, is the type of the event that has been triggered. For example, the health rule has be started as a warning, or it has started as a critical. In some cases, the health rule can upgrade from warning to critical. So that can also happen. And of course, it can downgrade, and it can definitely go to being fine. All of those events are listed in the event list. What you also see here is a summary of what that particular health rule is going to is talking about. So let's look at this particular health rule. The logistics memory utilization is very high. So this is a configuration that we have provided in the controller about monitoring a particular business transaction. For example, in this case, we are monitoring the node he hardware health. So this is the health rule type. Uh, I have highlighted. Is it visible in the back? Perfect. So this is the health rule type that has triggered. And you can also see what is the exact value. So used percentage was 77, which is greater than the threshold that you have set as 75. You can also see for how long that uh, health rule has been uh, going on. So for example, in this, it's been going on for a while. Um, and once there is an application outage or something like that, Limiting the time range will definitely help to limit the events that you see in the list. And it's ultimately going to help in troubleshooting, because you will know what started. And that's going to help you in figuring out the domino effect, because nothing just breaks like that. There is a series of events that happens. And an event list like this is going to help in that case. Another important information that we see here is the list of all the business transactions. So you can see for an e-commerce application, uh, business transactions such as inventory, checkout, order, these are all the things that we are monitoring. We have told AppDynamics that these are the entry points that we are monitoring. And that's why if there is any health rule violation, you will see the particular business transaction associated with that health rule. Sometimes if we are just monitoring the node, that means you are monitoring the hardware or um, uh, even the database nodes, all of that is also mentioned in the event list. All right, so let's go back to the dashboard. As you can see, the main purpose is we are using this dashboard as a base, and we are drilling down into all the, uh, all the contributing factors that are leading to application health, which is either critical or warning. What I have here is a very busy diagram which shows the response time of some particular business transactions. So for example, if I just want to look at login, the average response time for login, if you have some SLAs that you have to maintain, then this is again an important matrix that you want to monitor. So average response time for login, uh, for uh, confirm order, for add to cart, address, all of these are important metrics that you might want to monitor. AppDynamics provides the capability to drill down into a particular uh, business transaction. Now, when I say business transaction, I, what I mean is, if there is an application monitoring deployed on the e-commerce application, which is true in this case, we can go to configuration on the left, uh, and instrument some transaction detections. That means we are going to tell what agent type has been deployed for AppDynamics, what is the entry point. If in this case we are doing a Java servlet, we can go into as minute a detail as to what 
regular expression we want to match in the URI segment. If we want to split the transaction using the URI segments, uh, we can mention a specific URI segment or the request method as well. So the thing, the main idea is if you have a particular business transaction that is very unique, pretty much App Dynamics will have at least an entry point defined. So if you configure, this is called a custom include because this is not out of the box solution. So we can do a lot of custom includes for the application. Um, okay, so let's go back to the dashboard. Now we know what is a business transaction, how to configure a business transaction if it is not present out of the box, and also what are health rule violations, how to drill down into health rule violation. We can drill down into a particular business transaction if there is a report of it going wrong. For example, uh, for example, checkout and confirm order are pretty important business transaction for an e-commerce application. Because if confirm order is not working, then it's not going to generate a lot of revenue. So if we double click on this, what you see here is the business transaction page for that particular confirm order. And the flow map that you see here is how the customer is going to interact with the application what is the entry point? So they start with this particular service, e-commerce service. There is communication between a database, maybe to get inventory information. Then there is communication with the logistics services tier. Each tier will have multiple nodes. And if we see that there's something wrong going on in this logistics services tier, we can drill down into a particular tree tier. What you saw in the last changes, let's look at it again. We were on the business transaction. So this is highlighted in the left. If I double click on logistic services, tiers and nodes would be highlighted. And now we are looking at the tier at which we are interested in. So if there's something wrong going on inside that tier, we can drill down right to the node level, see what is going on. Three of them are showing as a warning status. Open it up and look at the health rule violations. This is, again, part of the list which we had in the application dashboard. So what you saw right now is multiple ways to achieve the same goal, which is to get level of detail that will help in troubleshooting. So we can go inside this uh, health rule violation. And again, it will tell you that the heap uh, was more than uh, what was mentioned as the threshold of 80%. So it was 89. So that is why this health rule has been triggered. What is pretty cool in App Dynamics is you can actually associate actions to an event which is triggered. So let's go back to alert and respond. The alert and respond model inside App Dynamics, let's take a minute to just look at it. Yeah, we have time. So all of the uh, all of the triggers, either health rule trigger or an anomaly detection, will be part of creating an event. Once an event happens, it's going to trigger a policy which will in turn trigger an action. Policy is just the, the culmination of the triggers and the actions together. Because if there is a, a health rule violation, you would want Perf uh, the right amount of action to be taken. Let's look at the out-of-the-box actions provided by App Dynamics. So we can either send an email, send an SMS. We do have uh, option to update or create a Jira ticket. And also, ServiceNow integration is supported. There are custom, a custom actions, such as running a script or running a diagnostic session. Um, diagnostic session is basically getting more information during a dedicated time uh, in, which, in which all the business transactions that you mentioned are going to have full call graph. And when I say full call graph, it means all the calls that are happening, along with all the exit calls, all the database calls, all of that is being captured for that particular transaction. So the ultimate goal is to get quality data for troubleshooting. Um, let's go back to the dashboard again. The, 
the reason we keep going back to this dashboard is because this is our base page. This is what we have created after spending a lot of time talking with the teams. Okay, what do you want to see in the morning? Why do you want to see something like that? So th that's why this is the basis of all the information that you want to see. And this is how you would want to start. Now, we do monitor the application's overall average response time, which is the average of all the business transactions that are being monitored by AppDynamics. And as you can see in the bottom with this messy graph, we have some particular business transactions like add to cart, um, login, et cetera. At the top here, it's just one average response time of the whole application, how the application is behaving. There is another, there is another way we can use all of this data that we have at our fingertips, which is analytics. In analytics, AppDynamics provides you the capability to link all of the data coming in from logs, coming in from browser monitoring, coming in from a particular transaction, and together you can use that data to make more sense, more business questions out of the monitoring solution. Let's look at a particular business journey for e-commerce. If an e-commerce application provides these steps which are in order, you may want to know if 100 people started, did they actually check out? Did all the 100 people check out or did they leave at some point? And if we see a lot of people leave at confirm order, that is going to be a very good indication that there's something wrong with the checkout business transaction. So linking all of this data together is going to provide a lot of insight during troubleshooting. And the main purpose is to provide quality data for the teams to use when they are trying to troubleshoot. You know, in, in a war room, they don't want to prove their innocence. They want to reach the mean time to resolution faster. Um, we do have you know, uh, all of our business transaction monitored here. So all of these are milestones that we are capturing. But let's not go into the detail. I, I think we are all on the same page regarding this. All right. Again, we are back on our application dashboard. What you saw right now was that it's, it, it's an active dashboard. So if there is changes in time, so it's monitoring the last six hours, as it's going to monitor the last six hours window, so it's going to auto refresh all the time. So that's another feature that we have here. You, you can share this dashboard with anybody. So they don't have to have AppDynamics login in order to look at this data. So if some of the teams do not have the login or visibility into AppDynamics, AppDynamics platform, they can have visibility into the dashboard. So they can log in as a, as a guest. Um, OK, that's, from, that's what I had today from my side. Please let me know if there are any questions. Yes. Is this product scalable? Yes, we do. We are very scalable. And I have deployed AppDynamics across multiple microservices as well. So yeah, the agents that are used to collect all of these metrics, they are very, very low. They have very low impact on the application. They have almost zero footprint. So yeah, it's very scalable. Yeah. Any other question? Yes. OK, um, how do we capture other network components like a load balancer in uh, application monitoring? We do have the op option of uh, uh, putting the agent on the load balancer also. And the, the benefit is, see, once we have deployed the agents and we are seeing visibility through the load balancer, yeah, it's going to work fine. We, I have done that deployment for a banking financial customer, so it's working fine. Um, any other question? Yes. Sorry? Other database applications? 
Yes, there is a huge list. What are the database applications that we connect to? I will, I will share that information, but I can immediately tell you we have Postgres, SQL, Oracle, all of that. Um, let's just spend one second. Oh. Anyway, yes, we do have the ability, and I will message you in the group. Are you part of the WebEx group? OK, perfect. Um, any other question? All right, that's it, folks. Thank you for joining and spending your time with me.